going to tell you a little bit about this new intro that I did for CSGO. If you like these videos and walkthroughs, hit me up with a subscribe on YouTube and follow me on Twitch to see this stuff live. Let's get right into it. On the stream, I grabbed a couple of friends and we went into CSGO and I fired up the demo playback utility. Now this wasn't all that easy to use. Uh, once I got it to work, we created a camera and I started capturing some footage. Let me tell you a little bit about how I made this intro and I want to hook you guys up with some downloads and some content from this scene. All right, so check the description for that. First thing we do is we have to capture. All right, so I use Bandicam, which is my go-to for high quality capture. Check out my best capture software tutorial. So to get this scene tracked, here's how it looks. And these little squares are actually solids that I placed around the room so that I could get a bearing on this 3D scene. All right, so I'm gonna track it here in After Effects, and then we're gonna go into Cinema 4D for the 3D text. And I can place solid objects on the wall to help give me a bearing about where things are. You can see that those solid objects are tracked perfectly to the wall. However, here's something that's really important. A lot of people have a hard time with their track and they say that their camera failed and they come to me and say synapse. What am I doing wrong? How do I get the camera to work? First of all, this scene is very, very smooth. So you gotta try to find a scene that's kind of like this where uh, you have high FPS capture and the camera movement is nice and smooth. There's not too much panning back and forth or rotating the camera side to side. So After Effects is able to uh, very easily track these points. The other thing that messes up tracks is too much movement in the scene. Take a look at that fire. That fire is just moving all around. This is definitely gonna break the track in many cases and it did break the track for me. So what I had to do was I had to mask out that fire. So I just basically put a mask on it and I let After Effects track the rest of the stuff all around. And if I click on the camera tracker, you can see that never does it put place those points within the black area. And uh, the way you do that was I had to make a pre-composition. I had to mask out everything in this composition here, just using a standard mask. You can see those squares and I brought it into a new composition and I tracked that composition right there. So there's how you do it. There's a little tracking tutorial for you. And I think that's going to help you to improve your tracks and not get so frustrated when you're trying to track some 3D stuff in your scene. So the next thing I did was I hopped into CSGO and uh, decided to snipe some noobs so I can get a good idea of what the scope looks like. Now you guys that play CSGO, you know exactly what that scope looks like. When you scope someone like this, it's a little bit blurry around the edges, around the circle, and then you got the crosshairs that kind of blur in and out as you uh, take your shot. That's what I wanted to make. What I did here was I made a black solid, then I used the ellipse tool to mask a circle in there. So this is what it looks like with a mask, and you can see the circle is very, very tight right there. And if I just use a mask feather, I can blur the circle a little bit. Added some crosshairs using the pen tool, made a new shape, and so we got the crosshairs in there. And check it out. Looks just like the scope in CSGO. Of course, we don't have the UI elements that are on the tops and sides, uh, but we definitely have that feeling that we're scoping in right now. I wanted to add a little bit of lens flares to kind of give the scope that glass look like there's some dirty glass or some glass particles on there kind of brings it to life you might not even notice those details otherwise even added the background in there so what i did was i took this footage of the room put it in the back and i scaled it up and made it really big so i gave it a little bit of blur using the fast blur so that it appears like we're scoping into this 3d object in the back all right so let's take a look at cinema 4d I exported that track data from After Effects into a Cinema 4D file and brought it into a Cinema 4D. I added the background into the scene so that I could see the track and kind of match it up, make sure everything matches up. And when you bring the scene in, what you see are all of those squares and those give me a bearing on the coordinates. And I use that information to place my text in there. While I was streaming, it was the stream's idea to shatter something. The stream said, Synapse, you gotta blow up the text or blow up the logo. You can see I get a shatter and that ring just flies forward towards the camera. And to get the ring to fly forward like that, I used an invisible cube that's just resting right there along the ring. And I gave it a dynamics body. So essentially what happens is during the explosion, 
that cube pushes the ring forward. And what I did was I just exported the shatter, the text in the ring by itself, nothing in the background. And I used an alpha channel. When I bring it into After Effects, it fits seamlessly into the composition over that original capture footage. And so I did use a lot of compositions to make this work. And the reason that I used so many compositions was that I wanted to apply an effect to the entire composition. So I would just make a new one, kind of a strategy to keep things organized and keep things neat. And if I go all the way down to the original composition and change things there, it propagates through all the rest of them until finally I end up at the very end scene where I add the audio and any final effects. The whole idea of using multiple compositions is to stay organized. One has a little bit of motion effects. One is for the wiggle or the color grade. Instead of having a million layers in one composition, you can simply use multiple compositions with just a few layers within each one. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. And if you already know all this stuff, I hope you found some inspiration or some ideas for your own videos. If you like the video, hit me up with a subscribe. Go check my website and my other tutorials for more downloadable content and some more tips and tricks to improve the quality of your YouTube video. And for a small donation, I will personally customize this intro for you, as well as many other of my intros. Check the description if you want to know some more about those. If you want to watch me make these live, you can also watch me on Twitch. I will see you on the live stream. I wish you the best of luck and have fun.